15 years ago in Nashville, and we had this experience managing Be Hill as well, you would go to a live music venue and say, hey, I want to do a show. They'll say, what type of show is it? You'd say, oh, it's R&B or it's hip hop. And 15 years ago, the answer, not the interpreted answer, but the direct literal answer would be, we don't do black, black music here. Hi, I'm Eric and I am Nashville. Uh, I grew up north of Nashville, went to Hendersonville High School. Um, I was an athlete in high school, and then when I went to college, I got really into mock trial debate, which led me to law school. But through all that, I was very into music. Um, I come from a musical family. Uh, I just wasn't blessed with the ability to play any instruments. Mm -hmm. And um, so with that passion, when I came back to law school, me and four other guys uh, that also were really into music, um, we had an idea to start an event that kind of catered to the music that we liked. We were really into Neo Soul, spoken word, positive hip hop. And at that time, this is 15 years ago, in Nashville, there wasn't a lot of venues that were open to that type of music. It was either hardcore rap or in Nashville, country clubs. And so it was 15 years ago, the basement of BB Kings, we sent out an invite Labor Day weekend and 500 people showed up. And after that event, it was kind of like that's all she wrote. I went to Howard University in DC. Okay. And that's actually when I first started promoting. Um, me and a, a friend, it's a place called The African Room. And we did a little hip hop night out there every other weekend. And that was my first taste of promoting, but, it, but being a concept promoter or marketer wasn't really in my plans. I thought I wanted to be an attorney. And so really geared towards um, most of my college career towards my trial debate, which got me into law school and what I concentrated on when I was in law school. And at Howard, everybody did something. I mean, Howard is kind of like the cream of the crop when it comes to HBCUs, at least in my opinion. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I know there's other ones out there, but you know, Howard is Howard. And uh, so it was just one of those things where me and my friend, and he was more of like the outgoing, like real typical, uh, concert uh, party promoter type person and he was just a friend of mine we, we um, were in the same dorm uh, as freshmen and as the years went by we did a couple of events and um, I don't know I just like the idea of setting and creating something and creating an environment that people like to be in and then once the people got there it's just satisfying everybody having fun me and one of the other partners were first cousins and we're more like brothers than anything chip and so we grew up together and then uh, one of the other partners, uh, Mo, was his best friend from college, so they're like brothers. And then uh, LaSalle and Bryce played baseball together at, um, well, not, they didn't play baseball together, but they're, they're in school at the same time at TSU. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they knew each other. So we all kind of came together. Um, about halfway through my law school uh, time, like my second year, I started managing an artist by the name of B. Hill, and he was a local hip hop artist. And me and my friends, the same friends that helped build Love Noise, and managing him is when we found out that divide, that gap that was actually an opportunity, the gap in the market that didn't provide a platform for a rapper like him. Because he was kind of like a early Kanye West, you know, self-deprecating, positive hip hop type guy. And there wasn't a lot of venues that he could play in. So when we stopped managing him, that was the energy that kind of built. So we already had a working relationship as far as the partners with Love Noise. And so going into the actual event, we already had a working history together. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of helped it. So I was here for about three or four years before I actually started doing promotions and I ventured off into entertainment law and management before I got into promotions. And in, in the early days of Love Noise, you may remember the tagline was Love Noise, where expression is the only thing. And it was about just positive expression. So you could come with spoken word, you could come with hip hop, you could even, we even have break dancers and stuff like that. So just providing that platform. And that's what we used to tell artists, we're not gonna make you famous, even though we're gonna put you on the radio and we do all these other things. The reality is, is that we're gonna provide a platform for you to do with it what you will. So the real progressive ones, they utilize that platform to do other things and then grow as an artist. Uh, Kenny Smooth at 92Q, when he first came to town and became uh, music director at uh, 92Q, one of the first things he did was have a meeting, sit down with us, and a few weeks after being in the city, we had the radio show. 
And that radio show I've been trying to push for years. Prior to that, it took him a couple of weeks to make it happen. And it seems like a small thing, but it was a really big thing because local artists had an hour on the radio every Sunday night. And that platform did a lot of positive things for local artists um, that are still playing today. Part of the story with Love Noise has to do with kind of breaking down racial walls in the city. So even that event, the very first event, we had experience with that. So the first event, we were scheduled to be at a hotel. We had paid the deposit, we were ready to do the event at the hotel. When they found out that it was an urban African-American event, they said, no, you can't do it here mainly because it was African-American. So we had to scramble to get B.B. King's and it just so happened uh, one of the partners knew the manager, the new manager at B.B. King's and it's like, yeah, we'd love to have you. You can have the basement. And it was Labor Day weekend. And they gave us the basement and we killed it. And we were, we started, we were in B.B. King's the first year and a half of Love Noise. So 15 years ago in Nashville, and we had this experience managing B. Hill as well, you would go to a live music venue and say, hey, I want to do a show. They'll say, what type of show is it? You'd say, oh, it's R&B or it's hip hop. And 15 years ago, the answer, not the interpreted answer, but the direct literal answer would be, we don't do black, black music here. They, some of them, uh, I don't feel, saw a need to diversify. So they just exclusively did rock or country. I think some of them were racist. I think it was just a different culture in Nashville then. And I think now, um, so much competition, you can't afford to be exclusive like that. The majority of venues are open to any type of genre, and it's a new time in America as well. Um, so it's just a different time. 15 years ago, it was really, Nashville was a small town, and it's done a lot of growing in those 15 years, so it's a different experience. But early on, BB King's was always very open. Um, when we moved to the bar car, <clears throat> it was a, a, a bar that used to be in Cummins Station, which is currently Cummins Station. The Cummins Station building was always open. The bar car owni, owner, uh, Kenny Winchell, it was always very open and honest with us. And we had a great long-standing relationship with him. And um, we've always been blessed to kind of open up different venues for the African-American community because, well, the reason no one knew about BB King is because it, it just opened, so it was brand new. Bar Car was not an urban place. We play, basically made it our home, and people used to think that the name of that venue was Love Noise. I did. I did. <laughs> yeah. The first show with an out-of-town artist of any significance was Guapale. It was Guapale at the Bar Car, and you know, it was, I don't know if you remember that show, but it was super duper packed. And after Guapale, it was Eric Roberson, Anthony David, and it was month after month, week after week, we consistently did it. We were the first ones on a consistent basis to do it, but prior to us, there were a couple of little pockets that did stuff at Exit Inn and other places every now and then. There was an event called The Spot. I don't know if you remember that. So that predated us by years, and they brought people like NDRE before she was quote, quote, NDRE, you know? It's just the, the community was smaller, and they didn't have the same type of consistency as we were able to build with Love Noise. And a big part of that consistency, and again, that word and branding had to do, one, the name was so unique and we pushed the whole t-shirts and all that with Love Noise was everywhere. And then the radio show and the newspaper ads that we used to do and the flyering. No one had done marketing at that level with Neil Soul and Spoken Word. Nashville really is connected, like because it's smaller, mm -hmm. so many people, everybody knows everybody at some level, pretty much in, in Nashville. And uh, not even just knowing somebody, you probably related to somebody, oh, that's my cousin or that's whatever. And it's, it's always been, in my experience, pretty positive. And I think some of the characteristics is just being close, a close-knit community. Um, every community has its problems and we have ours. I think some of the things like love noise helped build some of the culture to it because it was a consistent thing people like to do it and people from all cross sections of life used to go there but that's the same thing for first fridays that's the same thing for jazz and jokes the years that it was open you know the physical building same thing now at the weekend you know i you know it's a little bit you know outside of my age range but still there's a cultural thing going on there same thing now with um uh, Vanguard. I mean, the, the experience is familiar because it's been here in this community before and it's something that's needed and it connects people, you know? Moving forward, what we would like to do is more music festivals, um, larger festivals, 
and block parties, unique music experiences, and we're in the and on the way to building more of those.